Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Can Greater Bay Area lure foreign investors? What will make global firms bite? Lionel Messi and Argentina to face Guatemala at FedEx Field this summer. Hong Kong delivery driver probe to test asylum process. Cross-border tool for insolvencies faces test with China's Evergrande. Shayna Jack medals in hotly contested freestyle final, McAvoy set to follow. Can Greater Bay Area lure foreign investors? What will make global firms bite? South China Morning Post Foreign investment in China's Greater Bay Area has declined in recent years, raising questions about the region's ability to attract international investors. The decline can be attributed to a number of factors, including the impact of the pandemic, rising tensions between the West and China, and uncertainty surrounding Beijing's regulatory crackdown on various industries. Foreign investments in the region's top destination, Shenzhen, dropped by almost a fifth last year. While some German companies have increased their direct investment in China, many foreign investors remain wary of the region and are unsure of the benefits of setting up in the Greater Bay Area compared to other parts of China. Hong Kong, which plays a key role in the region's development plan, has seen a decrease in the number of regional headquarters or offices set up by non-Chinese companies. The decline in foreign investment in the Greater Bay Area highlights the challenges the region faces in attracting international investors and establishing its identity and appeal on a global scale. Lionel Messi and Argentina to face Guatemala at FedEx Field this summer. Washington Post The Argentine men's national football team will play a friendly match against Guatemala at FedEx Field on June 14, ahead of the Copa America tournament starting on June 20. This will be the second time Lionel Messi has played in Washington in three months. The Washington Commanders, who own FedEx Field, have been trying to host major soccer events this summer. The game will take place six days after the U.S. men's team play Colombia in a pre-Copa test match at the same venue. Hong Kong delivery driver probe to test asylum process. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong is facing challenges in handling asylum claims as a result of a recent fraud investigation involving food delivery riders. The investigation led to the arrest of 23 people from South Asia who were suspected of illegally working for food delivery platforms. These individuals are allegedly non-refoulement claimants, meaning they have sought asylum in Hong Kong and are awaiting resettlement in a third country. While their applications are being assessed, they are not allowed to work. The incident highlights the wider issue of growing numbers of individuals trying to enter the city illegally. Authorities and industry players must work together to discourage the hiring of illegal workers and ensure fair and timely processing of legitimate asylum claims. Cross-border tool for insolvencies faces test with China's Evergrande. SCMP Opinion the recent high court order to liquidate China Evergrande Group is an important test for a measure handling insolvencies between courts in mainland China and Hong Kong. The measure, known as the Mutual Recognition of and Assistance to Insolvency Proceedings, allows for bankruptcies or liquidations on either side to be recognized across the border. This means that court-appointed liquidators in Hong Kong can work with courts in mainland China to enforce the ruling. The Evergrande case is significant because the developer accumulated billions of dollars in debt, mainly from international investors, and its assets are overwhelmingly domestic projects in Yuan. The measure provides a precedent for handling insolvencies of such a large scale and will be closely watched by international investors. If the liquidation is handled transparently and effectively, it could boost confidence in Hong Kong's role as a financial hub. Shayna Jack medals in hotly contested freestyle final, McAvoy set to follow. ABC Australian swimmer Shayna Jack has won a bronze medal in the 100-meter freestyle at the World Championships in Doha. The 25-year-old, who has battled mental health struggles and a ban for testing positive for a banned substance, added to her silver medal in the 50-meter freestyle event at last year's championships. 
Jack missed out on selection for the Tokyo Olympics due to her ban, which was halved by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. German direct investment in China rose to record in 2023. Bloomberg German direct investment in China hit a record 12 billion euros, 13 billion dollars, last year, according to a report by the German Economic Institute. The investment, which accounted for 10.3% of Germany's total direct investment abroad, was financed by the retained profits of German-controlled businesses in China and Hong Kong, the report said. The findings come after Germany called on its biggest companies to reduce their reliance on China and as the European Union tightens oversight of foreign direct investment, citing security concerns. Hong Kong's Hahi denied a second gold at Swimming's World Championships. South China Morning Post Hong Kong swimmer Siobhan Hahi won silver in the 100-meter freestyle at the World Aquatics Championships in Doha. Hahi led for much of the race but was overtaken by the Netherlands' Merit Steenbergen, who won in 52.26 seconds. Hahi finished in 52.56 seconds to claim her third medal of the championships. She had previously won gold in the 200-meter freestyle and bronze in the 100-meter breaststroke. Hahi is now preparing for the Olympics in Paris later this year. Hong Kong 7.8 million Hong Kong dollars hand out for Chubby Heart Sparks Transparency Call. South China Morning Post The organizers of the Chubby Hearts Hong Kong art installation, British designer Anya Hind March, has been awarded a 7.8 million Hong Kong dollars, $997,170, government grant. Lawmaker Doreen Kong Yuk Foon called for more transparency to ensure taxpayers' cash was well spent. The Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau said the 7.8 million Hong Kong dollars awarded to the Hong Kong Design Center covered curation, exhibition production, security, market research and promotion but did not provide further details. Co makes Malaysian open cut with Bertie Blitz, Yuan, Varadon, Share, Halfway Lead. South China Morning Post. Kavish Varadhan, a Malaysian rookie, has taken a share of the lead at the halfway point of the Malaysian Open with Australian Kevin Yuan. Varadhan shot a 6 under par 65 to move to 13 under, while Yuan carded a 64. American John Catlin is one shot behind in third place. Varadhan expressed his excitement at being in contention and said winning the National Open would be like winning a major. Overnight leaders Jazz Jane Watnanand and Veer Ahlavut were unable to replicate their opening round performances and are now tied for fourth place. Malaysian No. 1 Gavin Green surprisingly missed the cut. Eight children's books that offer entryway into Black History and Chinese New Year. The Globe and Mail a selection of books for children that explore different cultures, dealing with grief, and environmental issues are highlighted. Titles include When I Wrap My Hair by Shanti Grant, The Little Regent by Yawanda Daniel Iowade, The War of the Witches by Zeta Elliott, Dragon's Dilemma by Catherine Little, The Blue Bowl by Flo Leung, All That Grows by Jack Wong, Wildful by Kengo Kuramoto, and The Longest Shot, how Larry Kwong Changed the Face of Hockey by Chad Soon and George Chang. Steenbergen wins 100 free gold for the Netherlands at World Championships. Associated Press Merit Steenbergen of the Netherlands won the gold medal in the women's 100-meter freestyle event at the World Aquatics Championships. She finished with a time of 52.26 seconds, improving on her bronze medal finish at last year's Worlds. Siobhan Hawhey of Hong Kong won the silver medal, while Shana Jack of Australia took bronze. The reigning world champion, Australia's Molly O'Callaghan, and world record holder Sarah Showstrom of Sweden did not compete in the event. In water polo, the United States defeated Hungary 8-7 to win the women's title, while Spain took bronze by defeating Greece 10-9. Byte Dance founder asks Village to remove Stone Tablet, calling him an idol, reports. South China Morning Post. 
Zhang Yiming, the founder of ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, has reportedly asked a village in his home province to remove a stone tablet that referred to him as a spiritual idol. The tablet was installed in 2022 to commemorate Zhang's donation to an ancestral temple. Zhang has maintained a low profile since stepping down as chairman of ByteDance in 2021. The tablet has now been removed, reportedly at Zhang's request. The removal comes amid increasing scrutiny of the tech industry in China. Other tech entrepreneurs, such as Colin Huang of PDD Holdings and Suyong Tian of Shine, have also kept low profiles in recent years. Hang Seng Index Compiler leaves blue chip benchmark unchanged in latest review. South China Morning Post No new companies will be added to Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index in March, according to Hang Seng Index's company's latest quarterly review. This marks the first time in the past three quarters that the benchmark has not seen any new inclusions. The review comes as investor sentiment remains weak due to the ongoing slowdown in China following the post-COVID reopening. The Hang Seng Index fell about 14% in 2023, capping a four-year losing streak, and has lost nearly 3% so far this year. The index compiler had aimed to eventually boost the number of constituents to 100, but the city's battered market has hindered these ambitions. China-based propaganda accounts flourish on X as others try to curb them. Washington Post Propaganda accounts controlled by foreign entities continue to flourish on Twitter, even after they've been exposed by other social media platforms or criminal proceedings, according to the Washington Post. While other social media platforms have worked with each other and federal law enforcement agencies to tackle foreign interference campaigns, Twitter has been largely absent from this effort. As a result, accounts spreading disinformation that other platforms have taken down remain active on Twitter, allowing the disinformation to be spread from there, including back to the other platforms. Twitter has also not sent representatives to the bi-weekly meetings, where companies share information about networks of fake accounts they are investigating or planning to take down. With foreign influence, we are less protected than we were in 2020, said Yael Eisenstadt, senior fellow at nonprofit Cybersecurity for Democracy. Remove property curbs as people's assets are disappearing, Midland Chief. South China Morning Post the chairman of Midland Realty has called for the removal of cooling measures in Hong Kong's property market, arguing that declining real estate values and stock market declines are putting Hong Kongers' assets at risk. The market has seen an increase in the number of homes with negative equity, a high inventory of new flats, fewer transactions, and a slump in property prices. However, there is speculation that the finance chief could relax property market curbs further during his budget speech later this month, following the rollback of some curbs by the city's leader last year. Ladies and gentlemen, six doctors here, your friendly neighborhood observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we've got a mix of news from around the globe, covering topics from foreign investment in China's Greater Bay Area to swimming championships and children's books. Let's dive in. First up, we have the decline in foreign investment in China's Greater Bay Area. It seems that the region is having trouble attracting international investors, with factors such as the pandemic, tensions between the West and China, and regulatory crackdowns playing a role. While some German companies have increased their investments in China, others remain wary of the region. It's clear that the Greater Bay Area still has some work to do in establishing its appeal to global investors. Speaking of global appeal, Lionel Messi and the Argentine men's national football team are set to play a friendly match against Guatemala in Washington this summer. It seems that Messi just can't get enough of the U.S. capital, as this will be his second time playing there in three months. The Washington Commanders, who own the stadium, have been eager to host major soccer events, and this match is a great opportunity to do so. Now, let's talk about Hong Kong and its challenges in handling asylum claims. A recent fraud investigation involving food delivery riders has shed light on the issue. 
It turns out that some of these writers are non-refoulement claimants who have sought asylum in Hong Kong and are awaiting resettlement in a third country. This incident highlights the need for authorities and industry players to work together to ensure fair and timely processing of legitimate asylum claims. Moving on to the world of finance, we have an important test for a measure that handles insolvencies between courts in mainland China and Hong Kong. The recent order to liquidate China Evergrande Group will determine whether court-appointed liquidators in Hong Kong can work with courts in mainland China to enforce the ruling. The outcome of this case will be closely watched by international investors, as it could have implications for Hong Kong's role as a financial hub. In the world of swimming, we have some exciting news. Australian swimmer Shayna Jack has won a bronze medal at the World Championships in Doha, adding to her silver medal from last year. It's an impressive achievement, especially considering the mental health struggles and ban she has faced. On the men's side, Malaysian rookie Kavish Varadhan has taken a share of the lead at the halfway point of the Malaysian Open. He expressed his excitement at being in contention and compared winning the National Open to winning a major. Good luck to both athletes in their upcoming competitions. Now, let's talk about something a bit lighter. The Chubby Hearts Hong Kong art installation has received a government grant of 7.8 million Hong Kong dollars. However, lawmaker Doreen Kong Yuk Foon has called for more transparency to ensure taxpayers' money is well spent. It's always important to keep an eye on how public funds are being used, especially when it comes to art and culture. And finally, we have a mix of news from different fields. We have a selection of children's books that offer entryways into Black History and Chinese New Year. It's great to see books that explore different cultures and tackle important issues. On the sports front, Hong Kong swimmer Siobhan Hahi has won silver in the 100-meter freestyle at the World Aquatics Championships, and the Netherlands' Merit Steenbergen has won gold in the same event. And lastly, the founder of ByteDance, Zhang Yiming, has reportedly asked a village in his home province to remove a stone tablet that referred to him as its spiritual idol. It seems that even tech entrepreneurs have a low profile these days. That's all for today's news roundup, folks. It's been a pleasure bringing you the latest updates from around the world. Now, it's your turn. What are your thoughts on these news stories? Do you have any questions or opinions you'd like to share? Let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.